Richard, thank you for having me today. I'm Ed Walters. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer of Velex and the co-founder of Fastcase. And today we're going to be looking at the Vincent AI Autumn 2024 release. I'm super excited about it because this is a very big release for, I think, the most powerful AI uh, tool in legal. So uh, you and your readers and listeners might be interested, might be familiar with Vincent AI. Um, it had some interesting research skills and the beginning of uh, kind of transactional skills in the past. The August 2024 release is really more of a platform uh, than the addition of new skills. And I'll just show you a few of them uh, here. So first and foremost, I should say, you know, I'm showing you this in the United States, um, but Vincent actually works across many different countries. With this release, we're actually including uh, France, Portugal, and Brazil for the first time. But you can use Vincent AI across any of these jurisdictions. Uh, we're adding more all the time. There's some more in the pipeline already I'm pretty excited about. So I, I think this is unique. There's no other tool in the world that allows you to search across these multiple jurisdictions to uh, do these kind of transactional or drafting skills in multiple jurisdictions and in multiple languages. Um, so I'm showing you the US version of this, but I think it's important to note that this um, localizes for your jurisdiction. So if you are doing this in the UK, um, <laughs> we won't spell analyze with a Z. Um, in fact, I think I have one of the UK skills in here, analyze pleadings, uh, which performs an analysis on statements of claim and defense. So here I'm going to pull in uh, particulars of claim in which Prince Harry sued the Daily Mail. Um, I'll just demonstrate the skill, which is uh, really, I, I think, something that is particular to the UK. Um, so I am uploading the particulars of the claim here. Okay, and now I'm going to upload the defense by the Daily Mail. And what Vincent does is uh, it creates like a table showing the claims by Prince Harry and the defenses uh, from the Daily Mail. This is pretty common for barristers uh, in the UK, but you can see we've gone through both PDFs virtually instantly. Um, and you can see for each one, like the statement of claim, the statement of defense and the comments, we can download this table into uh, Excel and so have this formatted in a, in a very nice way uh, and localized to, uh, to the UK here. Um, when, I, when I'm using uh, Vincent AI in Spain or in Mexico, everything will be in uh, Spanish. When I use it in the UK, uh, it will be in the King's English. Uh, when I use it in the US, it will uh, <laughs> spell analyze with a Z <laughs> and work on US documents. So um, there are a bunch of skills in here uh, that are fascinating and unique and powered by the 1 billion document library um, of VLEX, judicial opinions, statutes, regulations, court rules, and the like. Um, so I had mentioned before that we are now starting to include uh, transactional tools as well as research tools. So uh, redline analysis uh, will go through a redline document you've received in a transaction, summarize and assess uh, the risks of the redline um, and you know, sort of who made the changes in a table, which is fascinating. Uh, explore a collection is for an entire folder of documents. So if you have a due diligence room uh, full of documents, you can actually do analysis across the entire collection. So here I have a due diligence folder with 22 files. Um, I can do, I can ask any question that I want about it. I can use some of the sample skills, getting the summaries of all the documents or find all the non-compete clauses. Um, I can also ask things like show me litigation risks that you find in the due diligence documents or pull the needle out of the haystack. You know, what is the, uh, What is the salary 
compensation for the tech innovate CEO. And there's you know 22 documents, but it will immediately find it and extract it uh, from all 22. I'm putting 22, it could be 2200. Um, you could put like an entire due diligence war room into this collection. Um, and this is where the information from uh, iManage will also sync up as well. So red line analysis, um, due diligence, uh, exploring collections. Uh, I have an M&A due diligence task in here, uh, analyzing dep depositions. So these are all, uh, I think, interesting and in, in many cases unique because powered by this kind of global Vincent AI library. Um, and then uh, I'll show just a few that are in preview right now that will be coming out uh, between now and uh, maybe in the winter release. Uh, we are starting to uh, use the Vincent AI tools inside of Docket Alarm. Docket Alarm in the US uh, pulls from 800 million uh, docket sheets, briefs, pleadings, motions, uh, complaints, expert witness statements, and the like. And now we are deploying Vincent AI inside of Docket Alarm. Uh, we couldn't decide whether to call it Vita, Vincent in Docket Alarm, uh, or Diva, <laughs> uh, Dockets in Vincent AI. But um, I, I'm gonna go with Vita for, for our purposes here. This uh, is the first, I think, real uh, AI tools looking over Dockets at scales, at scale. So uh, this starts in the US, but we are introducing uh, docket alarm in the UK now and expanding that into other jurisdictions as well. What kinds of things can you do here? One of the things you can do is you can say, look across all of these documents and profile a lawyer. Tell me who she is. What does she do? Does she settle cases a lot? Um, you know, how experienced is she in this area? Um, you know, profile a law firm or a judge or a party in litigation. Uh, find something that's like this in uh, in other dockets, which is fascinating. Um, this is, again, like right now in the U.S., it'll be in the U.K. shortly, and we'll expand that uh, globally as well. Uh, what else are we seeing in this kind of autumn release? So one thing you'll see is that it offers multi-turn uh, querying. So this was not a feature before in Vincent, but now it is. When you analyze a complaint or build an argument, um, instead of having a, a single look, you can um, continue to ask follow-up questions iteratively, uh, like a good transactional uh, lawyer probably would. Um, and uh, so I think that's that's kind of the headlines for the autumn 24 release. This is no longer like kind of four pretty good skills. Uh, this is now like a platform with uh, an amazingly large number of skills. Maybe I'll just show one more thing um, on this demo. If I if I want to analyze a contract, you know, again, like not um, not a research task. I want to do uh, an asset purchase agreement. So I'm pulling into. Uh, Vincent AI, uh, an asset purchase agreement. Um, so I'll pull in the Garden City Hospital asset purchase agreement. So when I upload this asset purchase agreement, um, immediately, this is a PDF, but Vincent recognizes what it is. This is an asset purchase agreement between Garden City Hospital and Prime Healthcare Services. Um, automatically, we're going to suggest a handful of things that you might do with an asset purchase agreement. Um, and these are all the things in purple, like pull out the definitions, show inconsistencies, identify potential risks, identify client hostile language, and we'll ask like, um, you know, which client uh, you represent. Um, I can see what all of the post-closing obligations are. 
or at the bottom, I can ask, you know, really um, any question that we want. Uh, these are some suggestions based on what the document is. Um, but you can, of course, ask whatever you want. One of the things in the autumn release uh, is that we also have this new feature called prompt assist. Um, sometimes if you don't ask a question in the most particular way, Vincent can sort of figure it out uh, and make some assumptions and find out, you know, the answer to the question anyway. We found that it helps to give the user to empower the user a little bit more about those assumptions. So with prompt assist, uh, we'll say like, it looks like you're trying to ask this question, is that right? Uh, and if it's not right, then you can rephrase it. But if it is right, then prompt assist will run it based on the, I think, you know, more precise version of that question. And you can see here, what Vincent is doing is it's going through this very large asset purchase agreement and it's pulling out the post-closing obligations. If you've ever seen one of these, there's not a list in the contract of post-closing obligations. It's going through and reading the contract and figuring out you know, what generally is required after the closing. Um, and this is based on a, a rather large library of these kinds of contracts, as well as our team's understanding of how to extract these things in an intelligent way. If you are working on one of these deals, though, part of the closing binder is you figure out what the obligations are for each party after the closing. That might take, you know, two or three lawyers at the firm going through this contract with a fine tooth comb over a couple of days, maybe. We're going to do it here in about three minutes. And again, for each one of these, I can download this table uh, in Excel as a CSV um, or in Microsoft Word. And for each one, again, we'll cite chapter and verse, right? So um, we will show where in the contract this obligation is from. Um, this is not, uh, I will be careful to say, like we don't consider Vincent AI to be like the final draft of any of this, right? Uh, this is replacing some steps in the chain. The last links of this chain have to be human editorial judgment. Um, and so the idea is that this should be a very big help to uh, the deal team working on uh, an agreement like this. And the hope is that you know this will speed up the most boring parts of the work. Uh, but again, pointing in the contract to where those obligations are so lawyers can go back and confirm them for themselves. So this is, I mean, you know, again, like this is this is a pretty complete report on post-closing obligations. This would take a few lawyers a few days. This might be like a lawyer week's worth of work. We just did it in about, I don't know, four minutes maybe. Fantastic. Um, there is just so much here. We, we could literally spend all day. It's, it's, it's encyclopedic, I think, is probably the, the one of the ways to describe it. <laughs> so There is just so much there, and I can only recommend to people to check it out. But we don't have time for much more. But just a couple of quick questions. For people who are very interested in the technical side, what kind of LLMs are you using? What's your approach to this? Well, I would say that we are... Um... LLM agnostic. So we have built this so we can swap the different LLMs in. Currently, most of the writing tasks you'll see are using uh, GPT-4, mm. and I think it's 4.0 right now. Um, but each one of these searches is not like one task. It's usually about like 30 tasks. Mm. And so we're using like a lot of different LLMs behind the scenes. I mentioned the writing tasks we're using uh, GPT-4, but for some of the summary tasks in here, we'll, we'll use like uh, DaVinci, like the GPT-3.5, because it's very good at summarization and it's lower cost. Um, and there's not a significant advantage for GPT-4 for summaries there. And so we're, we're basically behind the scenes conducting the symphony of mm -hmm. different LLMs and different structured legal data from the VLEX database. Um, and I think that makes that uh, the tool really unique. We're not, we're not tied to one LLM. If there's, if there's a problem or a cost issue with uh, one tool, we can swap out to another one. We're using behind the scenes uh, and testing Claude from Anthropic, Gemini from Google, 
Um, you know, I think that GPT-4.0 is very, very good at these tasks, but in the future, you could see like a very good version of uh, Claude, uh, Claude 4 maybe or something. And so we're using the best LLM for the task and we're not too dependent on any of these tools to create these outputs for uh, Vincent AI. Gotcha. Ashton, I have to ask while you're here, are you using in the mix of LLMs any legal specific LLMs or ones that you've built yourself using open source? Uh, system? Great question. Yeah, we are not building LLMs. No. Um, that is, I think, as a as a content provider, very important. Even, we even, do even very, very small ones. Right. No, so we don't. Um, we don't right now, I should say. There are some really good ones that we've seen that uh, could be interesting in the future. But right now, we're, we're really using the large commercial ones. And part of the reason for that is security. You know, we want to make sure that we're using the most secure lockdown version of these LLMs to protect the confidentiality of client data. This is, you know, all ISO 1207 uh, compliant. It is SOC 2 compliant. And we're, um, you know, I think a few weeks away from the final certifications for SOC 2 type 2. But the, the most important thing I'll say is that we're using the most expensive versions of these tools for the client confidentiality. So you can feel confident that no LLM is ever trained on the data put into Vincent. Fantastic. Well, look, we, like I said, we could just keep going because there's so much there, but we're going to have to end it there. Thanks, Ed. That's brilliant. And congratulations on expanding the platform. Uh, it's really interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard.